Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Travis McGee with Them Grills. Today I'm going to show you how to smoke a pork shoulder or a pork butt on your charcoal grill. Uh, we're going to do it on the M16 here, but you could pretty much use these basic principles for almost any charcoal grill out there. I'm going to show you how to build your fire. Best thing to do during a time like this when we are all self quarantining is you know having the ability to smoke or cook large portions of meat like a pork shoulder or a brisket because everywhere i've been there's been plenty of pork shoulders or briskets it's the you know stuff like ground beef chicken steaks it's, it's been pretty scarce but large cuts of beef easy to find delicious to cook with uh, and you can make so many meals out of it whether it's you know tacos you know plain sandwiches you can eat it for days so uh Enough talking, let's get to it. Let me show you first how to fire up your grill for it. So when you're setting up your charcoal grill, you wanna set it up for indirect cooking, which means you're gonna have your charcoal on one side and your food on the other. Best practice to do, I'm gonna use one grate on here, which I'm gonna put my pork shoulder on. This over here is gonna be my fire. It's easy to access, so when I do need to come and refuel it over time, because you will have to constantly refuel your charcoal fire or add wood chunks to give you some good smoke flavor, but you're gonna wanna maintain it on one side so you can have easy access. Um, you also, it's very good to have a charcoal grill where you do have left to right damper controls. So that means I can control my airflow coming down because I want to be able to I don't want to, I'm not grilling my pork shoulder, I'm going to smoke it. So I want a, a lower heat, I'm going to target at about 300, crank my heat down much lower, I want to control it most importantly. So for the M16, we have dampers on the bottom and on top. So where I have my food, I'm going to close this damper shut and then I want my airflow to come in through my fire and out my uh, lid coming through this way. So I'm gonna shut my lid damper down just a little bit, maybe right now about halfway. I'm gonna come around to this side and I'm gonna shut this down just a little bit. I'm gonna leave this the intake about a quarter open and I'm gonna shut this one completely closed. Left top completely closed, right bottom completely closed. And I have about half open on the right lid half open or so on the left bottom. And I'm gonna draw my airflow from this way over my pork shoulder and out the lid here. That's it. Other than that, we're gonna go get our pork shoulder and I have about a seven pound pork shoulder that I'm gonna put on this side of the grate. First, I'm gonna scrape my grates off and um, let's just get to it. All right, so temperature's down uh, right below 300. I'm gonna go ahead and get my pork shoulder. Let's throw it on. And I will first do fat side up. Just like that. The way I season it, I just use a yellow mustard around the outside, and then I use a uh, all-purpose barbecue rub or a rib rub, um, and some brown sugar, and that's it. I don't inject it or anything. Um, I really like to do it this way to keep it simple and keep all the flavor on the outside of the bark. And when we shred it, it's just completely moist and delicious. So. Periodically, we're just gonna watch our fire and keep our lid shut, control the temperature, and over time, we will rotate our uh, pork shoulder around so make sure it's cooking evenly, but that's about it. Now, since we just put our pork shoulder on, I'm gonna go ahead and add one chunk of wood. You can use any type of wood you like. This particular is maple chunks. Um, apple is really delicious as well, but I'm gonna put that chunk of wood on there and I want it to smolder. Um, it's not gonna to be too much smoke. It's gonna create just a really good flavor on the bark, and, um, and that's it. So keep it shut. You just want a little bit of airflow and maintain a steady 300 degree temperature. And of course, if you need to, you could adjust your vents. I'm gonna open my bottom vent just a little bit more. 
and that's it. And I'm just waiting now for my temperatures to go back up. The benefit of having a charcoal grill with dampers on both the left and the right, top and bottom, is that you can control which direction you want your heat and your airflow to go. In this case, since I have my food here when I'm smoking it, I'm having that smoke travel over my food to give it that good smoky taste. If you only have one damper on the bottom and one on top, it's gonna to be a little bit more tricky. Uh, you probably will have to just do a lot more rotating with your food. And um, it might even be a little more difficult controlling your heat. But in this case, uh, like the M16, it's really a piece of cake, and which makes this not only the best steak cooking machine in the world, but also a legitimate, cool little backyard smoker. So when it comes to adding more charcoal, very simple. I'm literally gonna take, probably not even that much, about two, three good sized little chunks here. I'm just gonna kind of place them right on top. I don't want them anywhere over there. I do wanna control my, my heat. So I'm gonna place them on the top here. That's it. And close it up. Let's talk a minute about charcoal grills. Charcoal grills are not the same. Um, the thickness of the steel plays a big part in it, but for me, my number one attribute about a grill is how well it controls heat, to me, is extremely important. Um, making sure the gaps are all sealed, so being gasket sealed like our grills are, uh, to me, that plays a huge part. If you notice, there's nothing leaking out the lids. That makes it to where you can absolutely control the temperature in a charcoal grill. If you notice on here, you know I have these dampers shut. We got this one halfway open. That's halfway open, but you know you can see the airflow. It's coming here exactly where I want it. Um, if I had it leaking, if you see smoke leaking out of places, well that means you got heat leaking out of there, and you're not exactly controlling your temperature where you want it to go. So those are some key features about charcoal grills to look for. Okay, so it's been about 45 minutes since I put my pork shoulder on. I'm just gonna now take a peek. And what I'm looking at, I'm just checking my charcoal. Those three pieces that I put are still, I mean, they look like they're barely even started burning yet, so that's perfect. And I'm looking at my pork shoulder now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this around and because I want to make sure the left and right side just really cook even. So I'm going to rotate this about one, about every 45 minutes to an hour. So I'm going to shut this, get some gloves, and then we'll spin that pork shoulder around. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to take this. Spin around this way. And then after we let it Spin it around, we'll let it cook this way for about 45 minutes. Then we'll flip it upside down and let it start cooking that way. So far it's looking really good. So we're over an hour into our cooking and um, you know, as you can see, we're right about that 300 degree range where we wanna be. Uh, you know, if it fluctuates, it's really no big deal, especially when you're doing a pork shoulder because um, you just don't wanna get too hot too fast. But you know, if it gets too, if your temperature's a little low, say if you're like that 250, 200, it's just gonna take longer. So that's why I like 300 when I do my pork shoulders, uh, you know, cause pork shoulders, it's gonna be a few hours into this cook until it's done. But one thing we notice here is that we don't have the smoke coming out like we did before. And the reason is because we only added one chunk of wood when we first fired up our grill. And that one chunk is, it's pretty much all dissipated the smoke. So it, it's pretty much burnt up. This is where you can get creative and it really is a personal preference. If you want more of a smoky flavor, well, every time you add charcoal into here, add a chunk of wood with it. And you're gonna get that smokiness throughout your entire cook. If you don't, if you want less, then add less wood. Like uh, me, I like it in the middle. I, I do like to taste a little smokiness, but I don't want it to be bitter, like over smoked. So I'm kind of going to go half and half. Same principles follow when you are smoking uh, with wood on an offset smoker. Um, you know, if you have that billowing smoke during the entire duration of your cook, 
more likely you're going to have a very bitter um, flavor in your food. And that's why in the barbecue world we talk so much about clean smoke. Um, when you're doing a long smoke with wood, you want a clean burning smoke. Uh, it just gives you your best flavor. Some people actually want a little bit more smokiness in there and then that's where, you know, usually just by choking down the airflow, you're going to get that, uh, you're going to introduce more smoke into your food. So uh, it's complete preference. In this instance, I'm pretty much, I will just put basically a chunk of wood every other time that I grill. And I don't want a big chunk. I'm going to try to find smaller chunks so it doesn't smoke for too long. And, but this is another thing about charcoal grilling or charcoal and wood smoking, you know, outdoor cooking in general that I love so much is that you could take the same recipe and try it with different flavors of wood and it comes out different just about every time. So today we're using maple hardwood, but you could try it with apple, you could try pecan, you could do oak, mesquite. Um, every wood's gonna have a different flavor. It's uh, extremely delicious and play around with, you know, how do you like it? Do you want it a little bit more smoky? Do you want it less smoky? Don't even use wood at all. Just use charcoal and have it more like a charcoal oven. So uh, there's a lot to play with. Grilling outside, cooking is, it's so fun. There's so much you can do with it. And uh, when you have the right equipment, it's extremely easy uh, and enjoyable. So um, yeah, just some more tips for your outdoor cooking experiences. All right, I just took a peek. And right now, all I'm looking for is the pork shoulder. I'm looking at the sides. I don't want anything to get black and burnt, which is perfect. Um, I think what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna flip it over, give it a rotate. Looking good. I want this bark to look nice. Nothing burnt. It's perfect. And that's it. And you can see we still do have our original chunk of wood. It's just burned through enough to where it's not producing heavy smoke. And um, you know, we still got our lump charcoals burning very slow. Um, so it looks like it's about every 30 minutes of just kind of checking and making sure that uh, you know our fire is burning well and temperatures are good. That's it. In two hours, I am now going to throw a chunk of wood on. And I'm looking for something about this size. I don't want it too big, but not too small. This is perfect. I'm going to lay it just right there on my charcoal. Now you can see the smoke coming out. So it's pretty much that instant. Once you add a piece of wood, you start getting a little smoke. Another thing I like to do is get some apple cider vinegar or you can get apple juice or even water. Put it in a spray bottle. And during your cooking, just periodically go around We'll spray the pork shoulder. Really helps the smoke stick to it and um, it just helps keep it moist. We are two hours in. Let's give this a check. I'm gonna take this and flip this around. Looking delicious. Beautiful. Okay, it's been about another hour. I'm gonna take my pork shoulder. It's a little hot. Flip it back over. Now this is how we originally started. It's looking really good. All right. We're going to check this again. I'm going to give it one more rotate. Like so. Man, we got a really good color on our pork shoulder. 
So that's a nice mahogany color, which is exactly what we want. After this one turn, I will take it. Since our bark is looking good, we're gonna take our pork shoulder, put it in our pan, add some juice, uh, a little bit more seasoning to it. We'll keep it covered up, put it back on the grill, and then we'll finish it off. Okay, let's just check it out. Let's look at our bark for a minute. So we have really good color. It's all mahogany, there's nothing on there that's black. looks very good. I think now we're safe to go ahead, let's put this in the aluminum pan and season it up. I am now gonna, I'm gonna take my pork shoulder off, put it in our pan here. Um, you can use any pan, as long as the pan fits in your, in your grill so you can shut the lid, you're good to go. But we're gonna go ahead and drop it in. Um, the bark looks great and that's all we're really looking at this moment is just how does the bark look? So we don't wanna overcook the outside um, now when we put it in here, put in some apple juice, a little bit more seasoning, put some foil over it, put it in, and all that's just gonna really start cooking the inside. So let's get it. Our pork shoulder is looking wonderful and it smells even better. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna grab some apple juice. And I'm gonna pour the apple juice that much pretty much about a quarter of an inch on the bottom and we'll take a little bit more of our rub here a little sum on top there and then i'm using two so i'm using the hottie toddy barbecue crew 38 special and the hottie toddy rib rub for this pork shoulder Put a little of that. That adds a little savory and sweet, mixed with the apple juice. Now we're gonna grab some foil. Put just enough to cover the top. Now we're gonna put this back on. When it comes time to check in temperature, I'm literally, I'm going to just grab my temperature probe and I will probe it right through the top, right in the center. So very easy. Uh, you know what, right now, just to check, we are hundred and twenty six point seven. So we have a long ways to go, but our bark, since we are cooking closer to our charcoal and wood fire, our bark's gonna form a little bit faster than it would in a smoker, but it's perfectly fine. We got our bark, we got our flavoring, now let's just finish it off. All right, come back over here. I'm gonna scrape my grates a little bit. And put it just like so. Now that our pork shoulder's wrapped, it's inside our grill, we're not gonna use any more wood, so uh, the reason for that is that since our obviously our food is covered, it's not going to get any more smoke flavoring. Uh, we pretty much already put that on for the first three, four hours of the cook. So now, strictly charcoal. If you wanted to, you could go throw this in, the, in your oven, um, set the temperature at 300, and let it just finish off. Um, but we're going to stay true to our cook here with our trusty charcoal grills and we're gonna finish it off. So from this point on, I'm just gonna keep probing it until I hit an internal temperature of 205 degrees. It's probably gonna take a few more hours, but it's gonna be extremely delicious, so I'm looking forward to it. Just like we've been doing, checking the temperature, just drop down a little bit. We're gonna add another little handful. Placed right on top of our hot zone. All right, it's been a few hours. We're gonna check our pork shoulder. And I have been just testing different areas. And what I'm looking for is just for the pork shoulder to be very easy to poke a probe through. So very gentle. Like no resistance. And I think we are there. And it's saying that I'm in an internal temperature of 208 degrees. 
so we are done so now we're gonna take this off we're gonna bring it inside and uh, we're gonna let it rest for just a few minutes so here we are with the finished product it looks delicious it smells so good so what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and just dig right in and start shredding this pork shoulder and you see how tender this is i'm barely putting any force at all So there you have it, pulled pork from your charcoal grill. Extremely delicious. Look at how tender this is. There's so much juice, it is just crazy. Um, we started with just like a quarter of an inch of apple juice in there. Now look at all this juice and how tender this meat is. There's so many dishes you can make with this from pulled pork nachos to pulled pork tacos pulled pork and rice, you name it, you can make it. This is proof you can make, you can smoke pork shoulders, briskets on your charcoal grill. Just gonna have the right charcoal grill and a little bit of know-how, but it's very easy to do. So there's no reason you can't make this at home with your grill. Um, but there you have it. Go out there, go outside and cook. It's delicious. Go feed your families and um, we'll see you again. Thank you.